welcome to another edition of the Trap for a Day. He's Stock Away. My name is Alan, otherwise known as Heesui, and I'm from Overseas.com as well as the Speakeasy Podcast. And this time I'm looking at One Piece chapter 734, Rommel's Whirlwind. And the first big event is uh, one that we kind of saw the answer to already, but worth mentioning is that Rebecca wins block D of the big Colosseum fight. Um, it turns out that uh, there's a little more to Cavan Dash than a pretty face. It seems that uh, during the fight, um, he gets bumped and falls asleep. Uh, being another one of the characters in One Piece who really likes to fall asleep at inconvenient times. And so, when he's asleep, of course, this not being the band of, you know, the most honorable and uh, just paladin-like fighters, they see a sleeping opponent and, like, four people separately try to stab him to get him out of the match. But, as uh, this is all going on, we also see some of the Marines outside, one of which must have been somebody who swallowed the story story fruit, uh, which gives him, you know, devil fruit exposition powers. And he explains, oh, Cavendish, yeah, he's a, he's a real number. He's got uh, symbolism powers, so when he falls asleep, his alternate personality comes out and he used to come from the kingdom of Rommel and he was this horrible desert wind that would murder anyone he met on the streets and it was so terrifying that Cavendish had to run away from that country and become a pirate just to escape his, you know, the legacy of his alternate personality. Someone should just go, thank you, exposition marine. It was very convenient that you knew that story. Yes, that's my power as a story story man. And Rebecca being basically super dodger is the only one who was able to avoid his many death blows and so when Cavendish basically his alternate personality runs out of juice he falls back to sleep and Rebecca wins by default because everybody else gets knocked out by Cavendish's secondary personality and uh, interesting that they would bring up Rommel, the desert fox. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, Oda's one to make references in the series to other things, both historical and fictional. So I guess if you're going to, you know, reference anybody, one of the greatest generals even if he was not particularly on the nicest side uh he's not a bad person to pick and he was the desert fox so uh him being this like desert wind warrior makes sense and so rebecca wins and there's a lot of booing and now we know who the four people going into the you know the basically the final four or the uh, fire fire fruit are gonna be it's gonna be the ultimate Luffy fanboy Bartholomew uh, Rebecca the uh, whatever the granddaughter of the king is but you know basically princess Rebecca and the warrior princess as it were and the person who we're like 99% sure is Sato. And 
Blackbeard's Jesus the Burgess. So the only thing I didn't kind of like about all of this is I kind of wish Rebecca had done more than just dodge. Oda's usually pretty good about making female characters cool I and mean, maybe not physically strong, but. I wish she had at least taken out a few of the guys a little more, but winning just by dodging just seems kind of like just a little too passive. If she had like defeated a few more people cleverly and then super dodged Cavendash and his alternate personality, that would make a little, that would make a little more satisfying because I feel like I'm not sure how well she's going to do in the big final four. I mean, I feel like Sato is going to win this. Unless she's just, the bird just like totally cheats. I feel like, if anything, all three of basically our good ones will have to team up to defeat Burgess and I think he's gonna lose but steal the fruit anyhow but I'm thinking Sato's gonna win Bartholomew there is just a little too fanboyish he's got a cool power but I'm sure there's a convenient way around that um, Rebecca is just too dodgy and Unless she has some hidden trick up her sleeve. But I just don't think she's going to get the Marimara fruit. I think it's about more, you know, try to get everybody free. But when they beat Donna Flamingo, that won't really matter. So she can lose. So probably Sato. I think, you know, we haven't seen him in a while. Got to prove why this guy is awesome. I'm thinking he's going to win it. It would be kind of cool if Sato got the fire fire fruit and joined the crew. Then they'd kind of have a elemental member of the crew. Uh, that's definitely a different fighting style than what they have. So actually kind of awesome. I mean, the awesomest thing would be for Rebecca to win somehow and kind of prove that she's cool by beating, you know, Sato, Bartholomew, and Jesus the Burgess and possibly join the crew, but that just that's like wishful thinking is never going to happen. But it would be really amusing if she joined the crew. It would kind of balance out the you know, girl to boy ratio on the crew and it would give her a new neat power, basically. Like a really dodgy, kind of, once again, kind of a tactical fighter, like um, Usopp and Nami, but really having a decent amount of power would be a cool combination. But, you know, that's the standard one piece. Who's going to join next talk? Uh, but after that, little you know everybody cracking their thumbs cracking their knuckles i'm sorry cracking their thumbs what is that cracking their knuckles for the final four we see you know don flamingo kind of speechifying a little about how uh basically he's got everything in hand And I'm a little surprised that Don Flamingo has that little idea of what's going on. I kind of saw him more of a crocodile being like three steps ahead of everybody, which he generally has been in this chapter. But he totally does not know what's going on because he thinks that basically Luffy's still in the Coliseum and that really the only person who's a super ginger right now is Frankie and he's like ah, he's under control and he's like yeah it is Zorro but I can take care of that guy 
this is in the bag. And uh, while he's making his big speech about how this is pretty much over, we see everybody once again getting in place. Robin and Usopp running around in the factory, getting where they need to go. Frankie doesn't seem to be doing that well, but I think he'll pull through. Uh, and we see, once again, Luffy, Zoro, and Kinemon in the skies, ready to get into the palace and maybe into the factory. And so um, they're trying to find a way in and then Violet comes along and is like, hey, I can get you guys in. So uh, they now have it into the palace. So uh, Don Flamingo, once again, not as smart as he thinks he is. Um, pretty good chapter. We got uh, up once again. The ball moving nicely. No real, you know, feeling of time being wasted and good progression of plot. I'm thinking we're going to go back to the ship. We haven't seen them in a while. Um, and I feel like everything in the Coliseum is done for a while. I mean, there's going to be more stuff going on there. But I feel like they don't have to go back to that for a while. Um, we saw Frankie for a little bit. Um, they might cut to him a little bit in the next chapter. Um, I don't think they want to really have any big fights yet. So I think that's going to be a little while coming. And uh, maybe a little bit of the infiltration into the castle. Or uh, the palace, as it were. But I'm thinking we should go back to the people on the ship just to see what their situation is. I mean, we had a lot of Usopp and, and Robin for a while. So uh, we can hold off on them as well. Yeah, the ship people are probably what's going to be next week. But we'll see. Otherwise, uh, I really want to see Sato. But like I said, we're not going to see him for a while. Because I feel like the Coliseum stuff is under wraps. But uh, still exciting. Still awesome. Still One Piece. Um can't wait to see what happens next, who they focus on, but uh, it should be cool. All right, see you guys next week.